My history with PRS goes back to, I believe, 1990 or 91 when I got my first uh, uh, CE bolt-on and uh, fell in love with it right away. Um, and I was playing almost exclusively PRS in, in that, that decade. I mean, I had still had my Strad and a couple of other guitars, but uh, I had probably four or five different models, mostly the CR, CE Boltons. I really liked those the best. Uh, and then PRS custom built um, one model with Paizo in it. That was the first Paizo uh, guitar that I had that was so effective at that time. And that was in 90, that was early 90, or 94 so it's been a it's been a long what's 25 years if you believe it well I've been um, in touch with Jack over the years uh, and he, he I gotta say he's a terrific guy and I'm not saying that just because I'm looking at you docking but uh, we get along really really well and uh, he's a very thoughtful man um, he got me, uh, uh, well, he, he provided a couple of the, um, the Angelus series guitars for me just to check out on the last tour to take on the road with me. And I absolutely fell in love with them. They sounded so great. They were so easy to play. Intonation was precise. I mean, I really, really loved it. And, you know, I play a lot in the course of a day, three hour show, you know, about half hour before the show warm up and then 40 minutes or so in sound check. So it's a lot, but I took that guitar every night to the hotel, and I would sit and I'd play, you know, until I was ready to go to sleep. It was just so much of a pleasure to play. You know, the way I like to use acoustic guitars, uh, I think I, I have to divide it into the, the live application is one thing. It's a different environment. It's uh, it's about work, uh, so I need very particular specs on that guitar. It's got to be able to um, obviously sound good live. The piezo has to work well because we don't mic it. Uh, it has to have a good balance, uh, playability, you know, all of those things uh, that are just a little more acute, you know. Um, but sitting around at home, like. Before the tour started, I was warming up for, well, for a few months. I like to rehearse for the rehearsal so that we can then rehearse before the tour. You know, we do, a, you know, it's like six weeks of full band rehearsals. And we all prep for a month or two before that. So at home, what I did is I had all these guitars. I had the, the SE models. I had two of those at home, plus my signature model. So I had four of these guitars set up on my couch, all different tunings, and I would go in and sit almost every night after dinner. I just play for two or three hours, play one for a little while, put it down, pick up the other one, play that. And uh, the thing I love about all tunings is you don't recognize anything you know that typically you would you would do. So everything is new and fresh, and it's really a lot of fun. You can make it a little more jangly. You can make it a little more. Uh, a tonal it's like really a great thing and the tonality of all the guitars is, is really really great and you can see that they're all from the same family yeah the R40 tour started in uh, early May of this year as I said we started rehearsing uh, full band rehearsals at the beginning of April and um, I think the first day was May 7th or 8th so uh, the tour is going really, really well. It's um, it's a retrospective. It's our 40th anniversary, so we're deconstructing the set, uh, going from the present into the very past, right to the beginning of the band, and even before the beginning, as everyone knows us in 1974, uh, we we're actually even playing a little snippet of one of the very first songs we wrote, and Garden Road, it's called. And I think we wrote that in 1969. So it's kind of fun to throw that l little bit in and it's amazing to see how many people recognize it. But the tour is doing really, really well, which is, which is great. 
Um, we're really enjoying ourselves. Everybody's in good health. Find some wood to knock on. Um, it, we're enjoying playing immensely. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we're talking about maybe curtailing or at least uh, minimizing our, our tour schedule a little bit. Uh, it's It's been, t you know, 40 years. It's a long time. And we do have other things in our lives that we'd like to uh, make more of a priority. Family, for example. Um, and so we'll see. You know, I think that we felt a little more inclined that way before the tour started. Now that we're actually out here and having a great time and seeing the kind of response this tour is getting, that, that maybe it's uh, maybe we're a little bit premature. But but we'll see. The difference uh, this tour over past tours is, is is more actually uh, superficial. The staging is quite different. There's a lot of staging going on, and as I mentioned earlier, we're we are de deconstructing the stage, so we're going through stage setups from the past. So we'll pull up for these few songs what the stage setup was then, the kind of amps we used. And then as we go back further, we do the amp line changes, it goes back through the 60s, it go, or sorry, through the 80s, and then through the 70s, so that it finally arrives at the very beginning when Ged and I had one little trainer amp sitting on a, a stool in a school gymnasium, when that was the kind of gigs that we, we played almost exclusively for $35 a night. Um, in terms of hard equipment, uh, it hasn't changed too much for me over the years. I still use uh, the same amp that Mojo Tones developed for me, which is called the Lurkst Omega. Uh, it's a great sounding amp, if I may say so myself. We sell it. <laughs> and uh, uh, it provides the, the dirtier, hard driven portion of my sound. And then I use the Mesa Boogie Mark V for the cleaner stuff. Uh, and then the effects, I use a fractal for pretty well all my effects. I used to have individual effects and we've consolidated everything into a nice, uh, very uh, compact um, package. So in that sense, most of that's basically stayed the same. And I've used Palmer speaker simulators for oof, 25 years at least uh, instead of miking cabinets on stage. So I have no guitar sound per se on stage as Ged has no bass sound on stage. Really it's just the drums that are the acoustic sounding instrument on stage and everything else is running through the PA so that provides much more control uh, on stage. There's greater clarity when it's all coming out of the PA. You're not uh, combating with time delay from the amps on stage and the PA out here. Uh, so it's much more controlled and I think uh, on a day-to-day -day basis uh, way easier uh, to deal with. <laughs> 